This is the Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the clubhouse, it's Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Nadine. And this is Amanda. And tonight, we watched Jeepers Creepers. And, <laughs> well, we have a disclaimer. So this is, this is my bad. I mean, who's to, we are place and play with the clubhouse. So what happened was, yes. I have the fun facts. And I did that. Yeah. I just they were fun. Uh, yeah. They were too fun. <laughs> they were missing some of the seriousness that we didn't they were, know we needed. They were only fun. <laughs> so the issue is, and look, it doesn't even come up in the first page of results when you search Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. So you literally, for me to find it, I had to search Jeepers Creepers Controversy. Nice. Or look at look up the director. Oh, so essentially, guys, just so you know where this is coming from, I posted a tweet getting ready for this episode to come out and was just asking people's opinions on Jeepers Creepers. We got a comment from this awesome person on Twitter who let us know about the controversy that man- that Amanda is about to explain, and so that's how we came across it. So the director and writer of the film, Victor Salva, he is a pedophile. Yes. A, con- a convicted pedophile. And here is the real kicker. He was convicted in 1988. Mm-hmm. Years before the film came the, out. The movie come, came out in 2001. Yes. He went on to make three sequels. The first articles that I saw about it when I was, like, searching it were 2016, when I imagined they were hyping up the third Jeepers Creepers movie when this all came to light. And my mind was freaking blown. Like, how did they let him make multiple movies? Uh, he didn't make many, but even one was too many. Yeah. In all fairness, he is only the type of talented where we're laughing at you, and so we enjoy that we're, like, laughing at yes, you. Yes. This is a so bad, it's good type of movie. Yes. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> no. We just didn't. And this creep. This dirty, dirty creep. We blame Hollywood. <laughs> just makes you worry about, like... What else has a horrible person made that I love? Oh, yeah. I would love, like, if I could pick a dream job, it would probably be to be a screenwriter. And I think all the time about if I had the opportunity, like, the joyful opportunity to cast a show that I had written or a movie or something, that the worst case scenario in my mind would be to cast someone who then it be it like is a Kevin Spacey. Light. That they are a rapist or a pedophile. <laughs> that would be the worst case scenario. I'd rather it be like a tragic flop just on its own <laughs> rather than that. Yeah, Nadine, you want to hit us with a summary of this this film by this terrible person? Yeah, so the film that the Sturdy Pedo wrote is about two siblings who are road tripping home from college and they come across some real suspect creepy activity and they decide to check it out, and make horrifying decisions, like you do in a horror movie. It's where it gets the name from the horrifying decisions that people make in it. And shockingly, things don't go their way when they make all those bad decisions. It's weird. It's weird how there are consequences. (laughs) Be prepared to listen to us. Just giving you our full, honest opinion without any knowledge of... (laughs) The dirty, lascivious past. We are so happy through this whole review. (laughs) I know. So essentially what you guys are going to hear in this episode is our blissful ignorance. Yes. So please don't hold it against us. Now let's jump back into the original recording, shall we? And Amanda has some fun facts for us. Indeed I do. So my first grouping of fun facts are the Just Justin facts. Because it stars Justin Long. So cute. This was his first horror film. Also, his first leading role. And according to Justin Long himself, I pointed this out to Nadine. It's unpleasant, you guys. <laughs> While we were watching the movie. Gonna mildly ruin it for you. <laughs> there's a point where they're pulled off to the side of the road to pee. And that's Justin Long actually peeing on camera. You're welcome. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> and, and, like, how many people were standing there while he was peeing? And I was eating when Amanda told me that. <laughs> also. And right at the end of the movie, when you see the creeper face looking through that fake Justin Long, that's Justin Long in the creeper makeup. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm going to go on to film facts now. So when they're looking at the missing persons board in the police station, 
Uh, if you took time to look at what those posters really said, they're, they're really ridiculous. Under one of the people there is Tim Sullivan and his hair being Dusty Beaver. Oh. Colored. <laughs> and his occupation being a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. That's cute. Yeah, so everything on the board is, like, really ridiculous if you take time to look at it. And then there's were also, like, some uh, major issues the, the film came across. So the director arrived in Florida to discover, which is where it was filmed, and discovered that $1 million worth of his finances had fallen through, and he was forced to cut some 20 pages of the script from the end of the film. Oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah. There would have been a fiery climax where Derry manages... To get behind the wheel of the creeper's truck and drive it into an oncoming train in a suicidal attempt to destroy the creature. But you know where they spent a lot of the money, I guess? Was on building that roadside diner set. They built that? Yep. It's kind of crazy to think that abandoned church they could come across, cat shack they came across, but then they had to build the diner. Yes. So there was, there's also like the abandoned church in the movie was a real place and... There's a cat lady in it, and that's an actual cat lady's house. But yeah, they built this diner slash gas station, and it looks real enough that passersby would try and stop and get food and gas. I would. <laughs> and I would be so mad when I found out that you're it was like, i like, drive on the back roads of Florida, and you're like, oh, finally, civilization. It's Wrong. <laughs> Movie set. <laughs> and then my next set of facts... I saved this for the end because the last fact in it is my favorite fact. These are Creeper Facts, which is the name of the monster. So there's a cameo by Jonathan Breck, who is the Creeper, mm-hmm. without the makeup on. He is one of the policemen, and I pointed him out in the, during the movie. So originally, the Creeper monster had one line of dialogue in the film that got cut. It's after he kills the cat lady and holds, up, holds her body upright, revealing his true face to Derry and Trish. He originally says, she, she don't smell too good, Derry. That was the one line he was going to have in the whole movie. <laughs> it's so bad. I loved the chef guy's one line at the diner when he was like, hey, hey. <laughs> like, out of nowhere and then says nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they decided to cut that. Probably a good choice. Uh, but apparently if you look really closely, you can still see the creeper's lips move and no sound come out. And now for my favorite fun fact. The Creeper legend is complete fiction, but the scene where Trish and Derry witness the Creeper dumping a body down a well by the abandoned church was inspired by the case of Dennis Depew, a former Michigan property assessor who murdered his wife and was seen by witnesses near an old schoolhouse with bloody sheep. Two witnesses also recall Depew speeding past them in a van and eventually tailing them and riding their bumper for several miles. The case was also profiled in a 1990s episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Oh. Mm-hmm. I guess so. <laughs> okay. And those are my fun wait, facts. Wait, wait, but you have to tell them the other Justin fact that's fun. One other Justin fact. About little Justin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that you We're not that. so <laughs> We're not so <laughs> Oh, um, so at the end of the movie, you see what well, pans up from, like, Justin Long's belly button. Up the rose to his, tattoo. His head, yes, yes. You see his lovely rose tattoo, just like any young 20-something man would have around his belly button. And then it goes up to his his face where you see, and he's definitely dead. Um, so they had to make this, <laughs> this... So for this shot, they had to... They made a full-body cast of Justin, and it was so uh, realistic and accurate that the... Uh, props people felt compelled to use a trash bag to c- cover his modesty, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Covers his modesty. <laughs> <laughs> this <old> trash bag <laughs> diaper. <laughs> but yeah, so apparently Justin Long, aptly named. Oh, those were some very fun facts. <laughs> Loved them. Uh, it was fun getting some of them during the movie, too. Because it's so exciting when you have the fun facts, and then it's kind of the worst to have to wait until after. Alright, so what were our favorite parts? I loved realizing that that smudge on Justin Long's belly button was a terrible rose tattoo. It was a good one. It was. <laughs> I loved when his sister dropped him down the tunnel. Because <laughs> he's kicking like a lunatic. And then they both blame her for it. I would not. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> like, I'm like, that was all you, bro. Literally every part of this is your fault. Definitely love the part when they're in the diner and then all the diner people see someone breaking into the car and they come out and it's like, dun, 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 with like the different angles. <laughs> oh, yes. Very dramatic. <laughs> Very nice. Looking at all the things that had spilled out of the car. Also the part where, I mean, these are just funny parts now. <laughs> <laughs> they're so good though. Yeah, we probably should have all Yeah, gotta save them. Ones. Save them. Save I know. Them. Okay. Favorite, favorite, favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite part. Well, I know you love that part where Tessa Long was peeing for real. No, <laughs> I am upset. I can't look at him the same. <laughs> probably my, I go, okay, so my actual favorite, favorite part is probably when she's like asking the monster to take her instead. I thought that was super sweet. Oh, I thought you were going to say the sibling squabble part. You mean the whole movie? <laughs> <laughs> I like horror movies that are also road trips. Mm-hmm. So I just really like that aspect of it, I guess. Because I have been on many a road trip, many a long road trip. I've driven in weird places, like backcountry places where you're like, oh, if someone tried to kill me right now, that's the end. Mm-hmm. No one will ever find me. It'll be days before anyone knew I was missing. Lots of good hidey holes in the woods. So I, I often think about this film often as I'm driving around in the country. Time to think about it. If night falls, even better. <laughs> it's like this, the hitcher, mm-hmm. and like maybe Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You're like, oh, things can all happen. Except maybe not check the Chainsaw Massacre because I'm not getting out of the car to go investigate a creepy house. Especially also, not in Texas. I feel like I could have gotten out of this one on ski. Because yeah. I would not have made their choices. Never. I'm not going to go investigate the tubes. It looks like someone's <laughs> dumping evidence down. I'm like, oh, like, I'll call the cops and tell them to go investigate that. And I'm going to go home I for know, spring break. Well, and also all I'm doing there is corrupting the scene. I'm mm-hmm, not helping. Mm-hmm. You're right. You was right. So that is a good part, though. What were our least favorite parts? I did not like him being here. Because it was right. <laughs> that is upsetting. <laughs> just, like, the dumb stuff. Like, her, like, trying to run him over and, like, he just runs over the car. Like, first of all, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it does get funny, like, the second time. And <laughs> she does it again. And he's like, oh, we going back. <laughs> and then she does it again. <laughs> and it's just, like, just leave, just drive as far away from this place as you can. You cannot stop whatever this thing is. Yeah, for and real. And why are you sticking around so long to find out what it is? Yeah. I was also very upset by how the people in the diner reacted to them. Especially since it's not like it came back later that they were, like, in with the creeper or something. So I was like, what is wrong with you people? It wasn't, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be, for sure. Like funnier than you thought it was going to be. It was definitely funnier than I thought it was going to be, which and was, it was a probably, nice surprise. Probably funnier than it's intended to be. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you fall on one line or the other. <laughs> Plot quality. I'd say it's just generally kind of silly. Yeah, I mean, it's like, fine. It, basically, we're with them for like, the worst day of their life. Mm-hmm. Last day of his. <laughs> and R.I.P. Derry. Yeah, I mean... They just get, like, they just make bad choices. I know. And I mean, that's, but that's, like, all movies. Like, I'm thinking about it today, like, we're, like, so, like, I believe in being very honest with people, because every movie problem always starts with a lie. And, like, this one, it just, everything that happens starts with one bad choice after the other, making illogical choices. Mm-hmm. Literally, so many, you know what, that might be my least favorite part, was when she went to wait at the end of the, like, church road, for help, even though the only person that has been down that road in like an hour is the murderer. Mm-hmm. That made zero sense. Also, this is like, I don't know, a back road they come down all the time and they've never noticed that church before. Like, they're like familiar with the area. I mean, they're somewhat familiar, but I don't know that they're like that familiar. They they're knew familiar a local with the highway, legend. but the highway goes like hundreds of miles. Like, when she said that, he was like, that's like hundreds of miles away, but she was like... Oh, it's the same highway. So I think it would be like, I don't know, similar to like us being familiar with the highway, but it also goes like through Georgia or something. And it's like, we wouldn't be familiar with that part because it seemed like they were driving far because it felt like they were driving and driving, driving and everything was hours away from itself. (laughs) Like nothing was nearby ever, which is weird too, because as soon as they got to the diner, it should have been like more... Like, diners aren't just in the middle of nowhere with nothing around. No, that's a good way to go out of business. Yeah. And that diner was packed of people who it did not care. It was packed. It was packed. 
It was like a Waffle House at three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And they had the exact same level of being impressed. But yeah, not bad plot quality or anything. I mean, definitely not like amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> It does what it's supposed to. Movie logic, you know. Uh, they do it because it's in the script. Scares. Okay, well, I know the one scare that got me. I'm sure you remember. Oh, is that when Justin Long scares her in yes! the window? Yes! Because she's over at the end of the church road for who knows why. And then it takes her 10 million years to see the car that's coming. Because apparently she's deaf. And then she stares at it for the longest time like a lunatic. And then she can't get the car started. And then Justin Long, who has been trapped down this place, and we had no idea how he was going to get out, is suddenly out and slams on her window. And that definitely got... I was like, well, fair enough. Also, what is she doing in the car with the windows up? They were literally just sweating buckets before, and that car does not have air conditioning. Okay, so the scary part, well, I don't... I mean... Well, yeah, we're using scare as, like, a pretty loose term. Very liberally, because this movie is not scary. <laughs> no. And I don't even... You did the main jump scare. I, was there even any other jump scares? I couldn't tell, because nothing was unexpected um, to me. Yeah, and I guess maybe him being at the scarecrow was a little bit of something. Anyway, the scary part that I chose... It's not scary, but I am a cat lover. And so it's when he, he crashes into the cat lady's house. I'm just worried about her babies. Yeah, the babies. Her sweet little cat babies. Who will care for them? I know. Someone's <laughs> upset. And they just stand there instead of leaving. Oh my gosh. The choices. So not, not a crazy amount of scares, but... It's still... basically a comedy, this movie. <laughs> it is. It's mostly a comedy. Laughs. All of it. So many. <laughs> Again, this funny. is a comedy, not a horror movie, uh, yeah. basically. Um, Where did I, it even begin? When he's like, <laughs> it knows my name now, and he's holding up his <laughs> underwear. <laughs> his underwear. That was so good. Oh, man. oh, gosh. Even the last shot, when it's the creeper looking at us through his skin, I was dead. That was so good to me. His incredible belly button tattoo. So good. Definitely looks like a belly button that's had a couple shots taken out of it. He looks like he needs to lay on top of a bar on spring break. <laughs> Body shots. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so many bodies on top of the ceiling in that thing. Like <laughs> When it drips, the liquid Mystery drips on liquid. it. <laughs> like, in all honesty, it's scarier than like a drop of blood because you're like, what? What is, what is it? it? <laughs> Nothing good. No? And then to me personally, I just found it to be very funny. Genderlessness of some of them, but then also that one girl with like her teeny tiny baby pubic hair was like a cotton ball. I found that to be crazy. Mostly it's crazy because, I don't know, she was abducted in like, what, the 70s or something? Mm -hmm. Should have been a full bush. And that song, every time it played, was funny. But definitely like the, the remix. The 90s remix? <laughs> Chef's kiss. Oh my gosh. When the person gets beheaded in the car and she's like, are you okay? <laughs> what was the creeper doing sitting in the car? I'm like, why? <laughs> He's got a flair for the dramatic, I guess. He does. You can tell. He's probably a Leo. Just in the very beginning when they're like arguing over nothing. And he's like, infinity. And she's like, infinity square. <laughs> Such a sibling thing. I know. I know. Overall, I liked it. Like, I would recommend it, which I really did not think that I would be saying when we sat here today. Yeah, you definitely have to go into it knowing that it's going to be more funny than it is ever going to be scary. Yeah. Like, you'd have to be like a child to be scared. Yeah. Although, I feel like some people... Some people, I don't understand yeah. people like that. Me either. The sensitivity <laughs> level, I just, is like not part of me. No. I guess they didn't start young like us. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're not ready. I don't even know. So again, like taking into account that it's just enjoyable, but it's not really like scary. Mm -hmm. I probably, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, would probably, I would probably give it like a four out of five um, police psychics. Oh, wow. Hero. Yes. <laughs> I thought 
that I was, I literally thought that we were going to watch this movie and I was going to be like, oh, the worst. What a waste of my time. I know. Cause I remember suggesting it and you being like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, just the name, just from the title alone, I was lost. I was like, <laughs> but no, I, I was wrong. The only mistake that they made in my opinion is that Justin Long can't be in the um, sequels. <laughs> As for the unsung police psychic heroes, I would give it. Just like a three. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. It would be nice to be a little scared. Mm -hmm. They should have done, like, more jumpy type scares before we had seen the monster. (laughs) Because once you see the monster... It's all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you... Once you start seeing his, like, weird wispy hair, and it's not even like it's not... He's not like... It's like like neck hair. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, (laughs) like a... Thick rat tail? Like, I don't... Yeah. It's not, it's like, like, thick hair. You know those it's... men who have that bald ring? Where, like, yes. they have hair, but imagine it around the neck. Yeah, it's just all the way gone, <laughs> except for just, like, the base of the neck. <laughs> and it's just white. And it's... Yeah, and it's long, too. <laughs> yeah, long and scraggly. And also, side note, it's attached to a fish man. So that was our opinions on Jeepers Creepers. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Scary Movie Clubcast and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. See you next movie night and don't forget, there are 195 days till Halloween. Bye! Bye. Mostly it's crazy because, I don't know, if she's abducted in, like, what, the 70s or something? Mm-hmm. Should have been a full bush. Yeah, free for one time. Yeah. He's been so good. He's always so good. We're talking He's about the cat. Angel baby. The pepper. He's a feline cat. Because <laughs> I feel like it was a weird segue. <laughs> <laughs>